One Art by Elizabeth Bishop. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day. Accept the fluster of lost door keys, the hour badly spent. The art of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing farther, losing faster. Places and names and where it was you meant to travel. None of these will bring disaster. I lost my mother's watch, and look, my last, or next to last, of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster, some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent. I missed them, but it wasn't a disaster. Even losing you, the joking voice, the gesture I love, I shan't have lied. It's evident the art of losing is not too hard to master, though it may look like, write it like disaster. I think the first time was in Delbos' poetry class, um, in the 20th century American poetry class. And it's also the same class where I met my, uh, the father of my child <laughs> eight years ago or seven or eight years ago. And then shortly after that, my, my best friend who lives in Greece emailed me the poem, which I thought was an interesting coincidence because she just thought I would like it and I wrote back, yeah, I know it, I read it in class, you know. Uh, as, as today, in a different way, I, I really connected with the poem. I felt like it was a, I don't know, I could really relate to the voice in the poem, um, having experienced similar losses, perhaps. And especially when she says, I lost two cities lovely ones, something about, um, I guess I've, I've also lost even more than two, I don't even know, I've lost count, <laughs> five <laughs> cities. Um, but even the attitude, um, this idea that, uh, that it's an art, a lot losing, that one can master it, but then also the kind of mournful tone, which is like um, slightly ironic, you know. <laughs> that it's easy to lose, you know. I guess it is easy if it continually happens to you, then it kind of can become a habit, but it's never truly easy. I think, uh, yeah, for some reason, I, well, I also relate to the door keys and the hour badly spent. That's like a more mundane experience, but I also have that frequently. This, this like, actually, I feel like I'm, you know, I spend many days just searching for things to get ready to leave, you know, especially now that I have a daughter, um, because you have to take, you know, her snack, her water, where's her hat, where are her shoes, you know, and all my things. So there's like this mundane level, but then on a more profound level, I guess for me it is the line about um, I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent, I, that whole part. I guess I perceive more the, the quiet wisdom in the poem than I think maybe seven years ago I, I perceived more of the, the drama of the poem, you know, relating to this idea of loss, where now I relate more to the kind of calm attitude towards loss. <laughs> yeah. how, how do you deal with loss? Um, I guess it really depends on... Uh, what exactly, you know, on the type of loss, but um, I think it takes much longer than we anticipate or than we even think, you know? I think we, <laughs> I think we sometimes have to process things for many more years than we're aware of and we sort of have to let this process unfold on its own and we can't rush it, you know? So I think I had a tendency to, because I'd experienced a lot of loss in my life, um, like my father dying when I was quite young. I lost uh, a homeland to a war and a boyfriend when I was 22, 23, 23, um, to death, to a mountain. And uh, I, think I, I think I always thought, especially with grief following someone's death, I thought uh, that the process is just this intensity of acute grief, but actually it's, it's more like a, a I don't know, labyrinth, where you keep kind of returning to the same feelings every year in a different way. And 
Uh, maybe you can even, you know, maybe it remains for the rest of your like experience for the rest of your life. You know, in some way, you're always getting out of the, the labyrinth. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's uh, mis misplacing or violent removal of anything that you hold dear or are attached to. It can be, you know, the tiniest thing, just an object, you know. Um, or, of course, the most profound ones. Um, a person, your mind. <laughs> I've definitely lost a lot of things over the years. I'm very good at that. Um, I'm a master. <laughs> uh, I think the ones that I remember, there's two that really uh, stick out. They were both um, like plush animals. One was a, a, a hedgehog that I had when I was six. A, a plush stuffed animal hedgehog. And uh, I think, I won't tell you the whole circumstance, the long story, but I lost them in a very silly way. And, kind of stood for like a sense of security because it was when I was separated from my family because of the war in Yugoslavia and I was in England and I, my future was really uncertain and I think somehow this hedgehog was you know um, and I remember him like sitting on in this chair in a train station and this man was rushing me he said no we can't go back and get him you know and I just saw him like sitting there you know <laughs> So it's, it's my objet petit a, you know? <laughs> yeah, so there's that one. And, hmm, wow. <laughs> That's quite a question. Um, I don't know, I can't, I can't help but just think of, um, like, I wish I could have a couple of more conversations with my father, especially as an, as an adult, and ask him some questions. <laughs> about the nature of existence. But not that, who knows, maybe he'd have no answers. But I, I, I don't know, I guess that's, that's the main thing. But in terms of objects, I've come to terms with all, all the losses. I'm thinking it could be like the art of losing as one type of art, presenting it as a type of art. Um, or that there is some, something about connected to art in general and like all forms of expression you know that there's I don't know maybe every creation is like a loss of some sort you know where you take something and you put it into an object a painting an image a poem I don't know that's just getting a little bit <laughs> <laughs> I think it can help a lot actually with with, with, with grief especially and with um, with this processing that I was talking about. Um, actually, I was interested in studying art therapy. Still kind of am, but ah! And I used it myself when I was not, when I was suffering from depression and other mental health issues. I found, uh, I just naturally went to, to art, to, to drawing, to painting, um, because of that, it being this amazing outlet for processing without words. But sometimes words too. Um, when I was younger, I wrote poems, usually in dark moments, overcome with emotion. Um, I don't do that so much anymore, but uh, when I was quite unwell last year, I had this magnetic poetry kit uh, that my friend sent to me as a gift, and I was drawing words from it and kind of putting together poems, you know, so it was like sort of <laughs> writing poetry. Yeah. And that really helped. I don't know, it's difficult to, for me to think now what it is about it, but on many levels, it helps process it. Well, I do really like, I, I didn't like the way I read it, but I like the way it looks on the page. Um, the last line, though it may look like, in brackets, emphasize, write it, like disaster. I do really like that. Um, it's like a cheeky kind of last line. Um, yeah, and I like the I like the, the second verse. Lose something every day. Yeah. I think it's good good advice. <laughs> Very Buddhist. <laughs> yeah.